Hello, welcome back to Deanne's Art Studio. I'm Deanne Mealy. Welcome to Painting Tips and Coffee with Deanne. I had this idea to film a series of uh, just little tidbits and information that hopefully will help make your artistic life, your artistic journey, just a little bit easier as you're working towards learning to use heritage multimedia acrylics, uh, the mediums, learning to paint new genre. Maybe you're trying to master those rose techniques that my colleagues and I have been releasing um, in our classrooms and on YouTube, still lives, seascapes, whatever the genre is. But it all starts with understanding not only the paint and color theory, but also having some sort of, um, you know, rhyme or reason as to how you go about setting up your palette. So without further ado, grab a sip of coffee if you have hot chocolate or hot tea. I'm no judge. Iced tea, if you will. I'm in the South, okay? But let's go down to the palette and let me share a couple tips with you, okay? All right. So you can see my palette, and I do this with my students often, um, pretty much, well, often, meaning all the time. Uh, I have been working on filming a series on mastering the hue of red. So right now I have a broad range of reds on my palette, but I thought this was a really good place to start. When you purchase Heritage Multimedia Acrylics, you'll purchase them either in the tube as a two and a half US fluid ounces, you may also purchase them as um, most of the colors, uh, four in a jar, a four ounce jar, and then we also have them in an eight ounce jar, okay? Now at Deanne's Art Studio, I carry mostly, uh, most of the um, complete line in two and a half ounce tubes with a few convenience colors that I offer in the jars. And, um, so, and you can see my little cubbies over here. You can buy these little cubbies, maybe half the size. If you squirt out, if you have too much paint out, or if you are using the big jars and you want to scoop just a little over at a time to use in a acrylic form, pure acrylic, these are not globalized. There's no extender in them. Um, this one's about empty. They hold a lot better if you have a lot of paint in them. Let's look at this quinacridone. So you can see that paint has stayed very, very creamy. You can buy these um, at your local, a lot of times at your grocery or your dollar stores or whatever, and they'll have bags of um, just little like takeout cubbies, okay? So I use these all the time. You may see those in some of my videos. I'll slide them up under my projects. But let's go down to the palette. So as you can see my reds, I have two different reds here on my palette. And this is all pure acrylic, nothing is globalized. This is naphthol red light. So everything to the left of this area I consider to be warm. Now it's warmer in relation to everything I have to the right, which are my cooler colors. So if you set up your palette kind of um, thinking in a color wheel a little bit with your reds maybe in the center, if you're using red, and dividing all of your cools kind of in a rhyme or reason that works for you going to the right, and everything that's a little warmer over to your left. So your um, yellows, your burnt oranges, any of that, your yellow oxide. This is my medium white. So my medium white, it has yellow um, in it. So it's warmer in relation to my titanium, titanium white, which I keep over on to the right, okay? So, and if that confuses you, I'll have my students just kind of draw themselves a line right down between. Everything over here on the left is warm everything to the right is cool. Now, I am using an acrylic uh, disposable uh, palette, so I can just tear these sheets off and, you know, throw them out. But I will scoop my paints off and use them and put them onto my next page. You can also take water and wipe the page down and reuse it, alrighty? So there's so much you can do. Now, I'm gonna have paper towel over here. I always have nearby, I will have some sort of salt cellar or little jar or something. I love old things, so everyone who knows me knows I live in the his historic home on the National Register. My uh, downtown business, my studio gallery in downtown uh, is Historic Decatur, so it's a historic building. So I use a lot of old things. It's great. You can use a candle holder. You can use one of your to-go containers, whatever you'd like. This is for my extender. Alrighty. Now the extender will keep the paint open longer, um, but I will. I'm not mixing it directly into my paint. If I do so, I'll let you know. It'll be a global. But keep a little extender close by, and the extender comes in 
eight ounce, you can get a four ounce, but eight ounce and 16 ounce, and you use quite a bit of it. So uh, if you want to keep your, in, the shelf life is just almost like forever, but I use it um, quicker than it goes, it never evaporates, okay? So you can buy this and a, a 16 ounce and keep it on the shelf, keep it in your studio, have it handy in case you need it. You can sprinkle a couple drops onto your pal palette if you need to um, so that you can brush mix in and I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Um, I also have um, the other mediums that we'll you go through in another video, okay? So everything to the left on my palette, I keep warm. Naphthol Red Light, that's part of your basic six. If you are using the basic six, which is your Naphthol Red Light, your Hansa Yellow, um, Titanium right, White, Red Violet, Thalo Blue, and Black. Okay, so I have all my basic colors out. And then a girl likes color. So girl has been expanding her... Um, her tools here and uh, you know if there's color around I'm gonna like to use it I love to experiment with it okay it's all so convenient just to have it out next to my naphthol red light for me I will put down brown matter or and um, brown matter just makes a really beautiful shadow color on the warm side so I keep everything to the warm this is English Red Oxide, English, yeah, English Red Oxide. It's a more opaque, it's a convenience color for me, but it's really beautiful mixed into some of my blues because they tone each other. So I keep that one uh, on my palette usually, typically, not all the time. This is Yellow Oxide. That is, and you can see my brush is picking up color. I have water nearby as well, so I can rinse my brush. And the Yellow Oxide, that's a toned yellow, real pretty yellow. Hansa yellow, pure, very, very intense. You can see the intensity of that color, and that's one of your basic six. Derelide is a beautiful color that you can, um, it's semi-transparent. You can use it so that uh, on roses or beautiful to keep the glow in a sunrise or a sunset, but obviously everything over this way is staying to the warm side. And of course, um, I always have medium white somewhere. I sell it in the jars. I keep huge jars of it. It's a great uh, springboard for your background colors, alrighty? So you can use uh, medium white. You can toss in a little yellow oxide. You might toss in a little pine green or you know anything like that just to give you um, a variation. I don't have pine green on here. I just noticed if I had pine green, um, it must have jumped off the table somewhere. I would probably put pine green just over over here somewhere because pine green is warmer in relation to say my thalo, um, thalo green blue, okay? So, or blue green, it's over to the cool side, alrighty? So let me rinse my brush out and let's show you the cool side. Naphthol red, it's a cool red in the line when they're compared to each other. If you can't see the difference, I always tell my students, which is something we're gonna be um, going over in depth in my new online series uh, class that I'm gonna be releasing, which is Mastering Hues. And we're gonna first study the hue of red and use it in some basic compositions. But naphthol red light, add some white. You can see that it's a warmer color. Naphthol red, if I add white, you can see this one is more pink, alrighty? a warm coral, and you could get to Pepto-Bismol pink over here, all right? Let's rinse the brush. Then I have my quinacridone violet. What a, it's a, that's a beautiful color. Pull that down. If I'm brush mixing, I might want to pick up some Derelide. Look how pretty. Beautiful color. Can you see that? I can see that. In, let me tilt that up in some roses. Of course, red violet, the ulta, ultra, ultimate uh, cool color on your palette. Then I have the Thalo uh, blue green, phthalo blue, cerulean. So you can see how everything this way is cooler. Everything over to my left is warm. You don't really have to understand that yet. As you take the classes and you paint with them, this will keep you kind of on track. And then as you learn more and more about the hues, it will make a lot more sense to you. This color, which looks like black, is dioxazine. It is a healthy dose of pigment, okay? A lot of pigment. If I put some white into it, you can see, isn't that a beautiful violet? Then of course I have black and white. These are um, to adjust the values of my color, but they also, remember when you put any two colors together, uh, it will also tone your color, all right? 
So there you have setting up your palette. What do you do after you've been painting? Let's talk about that. What do you do? You've been painting on this all day, and if you've come and watched my YouTubes, you'll see that I'll have, um, I'll tell you, oh, just e e excuse my palette. It's probably a little bit, you know, crazy mess there. It's an artistic, creative mess, okay? And um, I save my paints if I don't use them all. Um, it's nice to have a handy dandy little Mr. Bottle close by, and all you need to do is just come over and just lightly mist your paint real light on your palette, okay? Right there on that um, acrylic disposable palette. And um, I'll have my, uh, I'll use, I usually use press and seal. Uh, I like the way that it seals down over my paint. Let me reach over and grab that. So I'm gonna pull off a little, excuse the noise, pull off a little bit of press and seal. All right, you see my, here's my press and seal, okay? Everybody, press and seal, all right? Okay, and then I'm gonna go down to my palette and I'm just going to cover my paint. And you don't have to do this if you're only gonna be gone for lunch or, you know, if, but if you're not coming back to paint till tomorrow, or two days from now, alrighty? Seal down, I always seal it down just a little around the edges, alrighty? Seal it down so my paint's keeping the air out is, base, is really what I'm trying to do, all right? And that seals down my palette. The next day or a day, two days from now, I can just come and pull this up. Of course, you're gonna lose a little bit of paint. Um, you're welcome to scrape it off and put it back. Some of them will have a little bit of a crust on them. So if they have a little bit of a crust, you can reactivate them. Just, you know, take your brush and work it in. Take a little bit. You can mist them with your water. And, you know, you don't want to get too much water introduced and thin them out. But, um, you know, so that's how I go about setting up my palette. And, of course, as I'm brush mixing and working, I'll keep everything, I try to keep everything kind of warm to one side cooler to the other side but um you know inevitably when i'm creating a masterpiece right it all just kind of starts you know runs of beautiful hues on top of each other i love the paint it's just real creamy and real lush so you know anyway you can purchase your paint either through um jansen art studio or uh, and also through Deanne's Art Studio. So I am the Global Southwest, Southwest, I can't even talk today, I need more coffee. Global Southeast, I'm the distributor. So I'm happy to uh, fulfill your needs or you know, over at Jansen Art Studio as well. We all work together. And um, hopefully this will help you as you're over painting with David on his uh, YouTube or my YouTube channel. Hope you will subscribe. And if you have any um, ideas. If there's some topic that you would like, you know, hey D, can you um, go over like, what do you use? How do you use the multi sealer? What all can we use the multi sealer for? You know, comment right below. Alrighty, let's just comment. Fire it up. Give me some comments. Ask me some questions. I'm happy to answer. And if I don't know the answers, I know the people that have those answers. So I'll get them for you. Okay. Next time, make sure you show up with your coffee. And um, when you're ready to set up your palette, pull this YouTube video up and uh, freeze it right on that palette. Cheat, squirt your colors out, but as you paint with it that way, you certainly will start to understand warms and cools. Your brain might not, but your eye will start to see it. Trust me, all right? Okay, until next time, we'll see you next time on Deanne's uh, Paint Tips and Coffee. I hope you have a great day. Stay safe out there.